This is a demonstration of the time filter system. Time filter is a tool that allows animators to manipulate time on certain sets of objects. There are a few different types of filters available. We're going to be taking a look at the drop frame filter and the time warp filter. The drop frame filter, for lack of a better explanation, helps you put your CG animation on twos. Or more accurately, time out your animation on ones and twos. The standard method of doing this, you'd probably grab your whole rig and bake the curves on every other frame with step tangents. That's okay for some scenarios, but it's incredibly destructive to the animation process, and typically you'd need to save your scene and version up before baking your curves like this. The time filter affects time in a non-destructive way. Your animation curves are unaffected. So here's a simple example. We have a ball moving from point A to point B. Let's put the whole thing on twos. What we'll do is we'll create a drop frame filter, and we'll say the hold will be twos, and hit OK. And now we see in our time filter window, we have a new filter called ball, and inside this ball filter we have our object here, p-sphere. And if we play the animation, we can see that although its animation curve is unaffected, it behaves as if it's on twos. It doesn't have to be on twos, you can put it on fours or tens, whatever you like. We also have the time warp filter, which works the same way as the Maya time warp, except it applies only to the objects within the filter. So let's make one of those and put that on the cube. We'll call this one cube. Now you we see that we have this new curve for our time warp, and let me show you how this works. Drop a key in there, and there we have a time warp on just the cube. So we can see two different objects with two different time filters and how that works. Now let's try a more advanced example. So here we have a nice little scene where Froggy is jumping through the air. And I want to put a time filter on this to punch it up a little bit. I want to put the slow parts on twos and the fast parts on ones. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new filter. I want a drop frame filter. Now we have a drop frame filter with nothing inside of it. I want to put the entire froggy rig inside of it. And the way to do that is I'm just going to choose any part of his rig. I'm going to right click on the add button and I'm going to hit add all to filter. It looks like that worked fine. So to start with, I'm going to say I'm going to want him to be on twos at the beginning. As he enters into his run about here, let's have him go on to ones. Okay, that's looking good. And as he jumps into the air, as he reaches the height of his jump, we want to put him back onto twos here. And now we get into the main issue with a drop framing in 3D. So if we go to the perspective view, we can see he is on twos. He is indeed on twos on these frames. But if we go to the camera, well, the camera is moving, so he's not holding still for twos. He's stuttering. He's strobing because while he's holding still in world space, he's not holding still in camera space. So we want to fix that. And how do we fix that? Quite simply, we take our drop frame filter and we hit this button here, which is the Create Camera Offset. And you'll notice that we have a new little, it's opened up a new window. There's a new node there, which is the Froggy Camera Offset. Now, when we scrub, he sits nice and still, as we expect him to be. Okay, so he's going to come, as he comes down on this fast part, I want the filter to go back onto ones, especially if he's interacting with the ground. I don't want him sliding on the ground. And this is the point. You give the animator control over when he's on ones and when he's on twos. You don't want uh, your character to be sliding on the ground. And that is all we have to do to put a drop frame animation on our character. Now, one neat thing, if you go back to perspective view, you can see that he is, during these uh, these twos frames, he's got kind of this strange double motion happening. But if we want to see how it works from a different camera, we can just click on the filter and we can change the camera to the camera we want to uh, be affected. And you can see he's popped back to the proper behavior from the perspective. Typically, we only care about the render camera, so we'll switch that back. There's a lot more under the hood, such as the ability to... Uh, import or export time filter data. You can merge filters if you have multiple filters within your scene. And if we look under the advanced options, you can even convert the filter to a simple time ramp which will function in vanilla Maya. That's for outsourcing.